Hey, it's Alasha Linov and I'd love to share with you some of the frequently asked questions that folk on our database are having with regards to water cell sustainability. The first question is, what happens if the electricity suddenly goes down and you cannot pump water to where you need to get it to? What I've learned from the Earthship community and Mike Reynolds is that they always have the tanks as high as possible so they build a roof like up and the water tank is right there so the water tank catches the water as high as possible and then obviously your tap is at the bottom or your your inlet to your filtration system so that's just going to be gravity fed and then obviously from like the last biochar filter or whatever filtration system because of the pressure of the water you'll be able to get that water so you might not be able to um, shower at pressure but uh, you will definitely be able to get your water out because um, you know it's higher than the outlet point without obviously in the cities we have very little space so here right under the dome I build an um, underground water tank and with that water tank you the only way to get water out is a, with a pump so <clears throat> there's, there's a variety of pumps and um, there is a submersible pump that you can do with solar and as soon as the Sun hits it it starts pumping but obviously then what happens when there is no Sun <laughs> So the trick is again to would to pump water out to a reserve tank that's higher, preferably on a tower. If you can put that tank on a five meter tower, you know that your then should the pumps go down, you have excellent pressure, um, you know, any time. So if you have your tank up, then you can pump from the underground water reservoir. Uh, whenever there is sun, it just pumps up, stops, and then it's there. Or you build a water tank just like behind me, or the ferro cement uh, cylinder. Another good question is what to do so our soaps that we, you know, use to wash our bodies don't clog up and build up the salt in our soil. Because obviously, if you build up the salt in our soil, then um, eventually the soil just turns to unnourished unproductive um, medium which you can't grow much in so this is where the little constructed wetland which I taught you and that wetland in the in the thousand liter flow burn is excellent in fact it's still treating my water and the papyrus is uh, close to four meters tall um, yeah, it's the same one in the flow burn, but I used a whole flow burn, two flow burns, so my root system couldn't go much deeper. Maybe it's a bit of a waste, uh, because most of the root activity, the treatment activity happens in the first uh, 40 centimeters of the, you know, of the gravel. So, but anyway, I've used a whole one cubic meter. <laughs> um, so the wetland plants, they love so it comes in the soapy water through the gravel drops in through the rockery and comes up and the water is treated filtered by the plant the plant roots just absorb and the bacteria treats the water and they suck up all the muck and they thrive so there's water plants thrive on soapy water so then the water that gets released out of the wetland um, via pump onto your garden does not have any salt or soaps or maybe a tiny tiny amount but nothing worth mentioning so that's why we mm, treat our recycle our grey water in a contained environment without letting it leach into the soil um, which pollutes our underground water so the constructed wetland is crucial if you want long-term sustainability um, and of course you can now use all your waste water again in your garden so you double your water <clears throat> so without a wetland I don't think you can actually you can actually salt up your your soil fully and then eventually you won't be able to grow much in it okay another good question is um, how to maintain good quality water uh, water in the storage container so with water it's important to remember that cold water is healthy 
So if you're having a plastic tank standing in a hot sun, it's just going to breed pathogenic bacteria. It's going to cook in there. You can, however, leave a piece of the plastic tank out and then most of the shade, that warmth and that here is cold is going to create natural circulation in the water tank. So that's also a possibility. Um, Besides, not to mention that the plastic tank in the sun is going to last 15 years at tops and then it just starts to disintegrate. Um, so cold water is healthy water. So put your water tank underneath the shade of a tree uh, or on the uh, shady side of the house. It's very important. Um, also there is a treatment that happens in the tank uh, due to settling. So the water, the muck actually settles down, down, down and then that's why our outlet um, which goes to our filter to our house is you know maybe 20 centimeters higher than the floor level. So the way that we construct a water tank if we are doing our own build or we can even retrofit a plastic tank but we basically create uh, the floor is slightly slanted to a lowest point it's called the sump and this is where our blast out valve is so we can take that muck and suck it out and send it away otherwise if you don't have that on a conventional plastic tank you actually have to go in with because at some point the muck is going to get to a point of the outlet and uh, you're going to start having quite dirty water coming in. The only way to do that, uh, to clean that, is to obviously bleed your tank, but you still got 20 centimeters. <laughs> and then that you've got to go in with buckets, uh, sponges, and cloth towels, and you know get it all out every few years. So with our tanks that we build, that's why it's so much better to build or retrofit than standard tank, as you can have that surface that goes down like a cone and then a sump and then you can blast that water out. Another great question is how easy is to manipulate the plumbing system? Well look, being in South Africa obviously all our plumbing is on the outside so it's super easy. I know a lot of you folk are not going to go and tamper with your plumbing in a rental property so let's just talk up from the easiest uh, point. Um, there is a siphon pump, which is this automotive siphon pump, it's this red thing and I've used it and I've shown it in a few of my videos and you basically run a pipe to your bath and outside through the window and then you give it a couple of pumps and in like, you know, when you, in Africa they suck petrol from one car to the tank but you know, you siphon it and then it basically starts the process of um, the water starts going to a lowest point so we haven't affected any plumbing we haven't cut into anything so that water goes out of the bath ble drains the bath out obviously slow you can't irrigate with that there's no pressure but it goes into the wetland goes through the treatment process and there is a, a pump that kicks in once the water is at certain level in your third on your collection point, your, your drum, which is lower than the wetland. It's, 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 you see it on my videos, it's um, that blue drum that's at the bottom there and then the pump float switch comes up, kicks in and then that irrigates the garden. So you can obviously build all of that um, quite easily in, in a weekend uh, with the wetland and a little sump and connected with a pump and then you know it's yeah, you just get a couple of uh, a pipe that can irrigate out of there and then voila, you've got high pressure water. So your water from your bath comes in low pressure, just trickles in. The Once the wetland does the treatment and then it overflows, the clean water overflows into this blue drum collection point and whoppa, it sends it to any point of the garden so you can irrigate with it or you can even push it up to a header tank, although I don't store, store grey water, we don't, we don't actually store grey water, grey water starts going smelly if you store it, so the, 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 the trick with it is to use it. So if you don't do a wetland you're gonna see, you're gonna have that water basically not doing good for your garden, we spoke about it previously, and there'll be a stink, unless it's all with a nice lid closed underground, you don't see it, but still, wetlands are just an awesome way to create an extra ecosystem have mint and geraniums and uh, sugarcane and whatever water plants that are edible 
you could you could grow and it, even the non-edibles are so pretty I mean just standing with this lush garden that's forever green it's just awesome let's talk about cold climates so this is what I would do you know the the thousand liter uh, cage so then they're, they're not expensive those drums they come with a cage and a thousand liter vessel so the thousand liter vessel already discussed you can split it into two and make a wet, two wetlands. So you've got a 2.4 square meter wetland. Yeah? Um, the, if you submerge them, you're obviously going to have a cage left. But if you don't submerge them, um, you'll use the cage in a rental property. So you're not you know, doing any alterations to the garden. So they'll just stand in the cage as they are on the pavement no problem and then the water comes out as I said was a siphon pump into the wetland very easy two minutes um, and then it overflows into the sun but the, the, for the cold climate this is what I would do I would use either polystyrene or um, straw bales that you can put around or some form of insulation the pink stuff you get in America I don't know what the name is but it's the foam insulator you, and you basically just cut out panels it's quite easy you can use any knife and you you put it all around so that's and underneath because if it's exposed so now you've got this pink looking <laughs> thing um, and then what I would do I would use the cage the one by one one by 1.2 meter one meter high cage and I'd put it on top and I'd wrap the um, a clear plastic uh, which is this uh, vinyl you get you know you just wrap it it's so easy and then you put it on top so that creates a greenhouse so that will prolong the life of uh, your treatment process for many months more because um, the mass of the gravel and the water will heat up and it won't go to freeze so quickly in a hurry but obviously if you've got extreme temperatures then you know yeah then the treatment process stops but then you don't need to use the water for the garden because it's freezing temperature so this is more from spring to autumn um, you're using the wetland so that's a really cool way to use it just without altering any plumbing but if you do need to alter plumbing um, it's actually better to build from scratch to tell you honestly because plumbing underground hidden is something else um, <laughs> you know so you can't get it out plumbing in the walls is also another story can't get it out so there is a machine it sits behind the toilet it's called a macerator pump and it can pump the water higher but then you know you've got an extra thousand dollar investment and um, and that deal will deal with sewage water and grey water so it will can send it to a wetland but you, you can look into a macerator pump basically chops up the poo the feces and uh, puts it up through a 50 mil pipe to higher point so you usually use a macerator pump if your toilet is so low and you need to get sewage up so but really if your plumbing is all hidden it's 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 going to be a challenge I'm not gonna um, lie to you so the siphon pump is the best way to get started for any novice and um, yeah it just bleeds the water just give it two three pumps and it just carries on what can one do in an apartment okay so it was only a balcony to spare it's a very good question so I've got in our training and I'm actually gonna make it a free lesson for everybody I've got this cool food growing machine which I got inspired by an American design garden tower and I've just did a couple of alterations and I'm, I made it out of uh, a, 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 again a thousand liter bin and another round cylinder um, so I've got two a mini one and a large one um, and it's got a compost chute in the middle and you can put a little tray for water plants so what you can do in a, in a, in a flat is uh, this tray at the bottom okay so let's say you use a, a half um, a thousand liter flow burn so you cut it in half or even a 30 centimeter into three and then you use that as a tray at the bottom and then you put a cylinder in the middle and that's you've got plants I'm actually going to show it to you but um, do a quick recording um, 
so what will happen there is you can just carry the buckets of water from the um, bath and pour it into this uh, tray at the bottom and then um, you can have a little pump that takes the water through uh, the wetland um, because the wetland is going to treat it from soaps and then push it up with irrigation through this cylinder and now you've got 60 uh, vegetables on one square meter so so that's what you can do in a, a balcony i have being an inventor i've thought of some ideas of where you can waterproof the bottom part of your balcony and run a little clear pipe along <laughs> I mean, this is worth investigating. I'd love for some of you guys to actually do it. But from the bath, you've got this clear pipe, nice and neat, running along the corner of the flat, and then going to obviously uh, this this wetland point. And again, you can, you know, use a siphon pump, and it goes there, and um, yeah, and it irrigates your whole garden. Uh, when your whole balcony is a garden, then becomes and then you. Um, put some stepping stones where you can walk and the rest is just this lush garden. Um, you, if you don't have enough sun you'll need to put some grow lamps um, to get Vuma or that uh, blue and red spectra, whatever they need. Yeah, but that's just some ideas for you for the balcony. So don't worry, you can still do something um, even being in a flat. So there's a good question, how to make a mobile um, unit for a tiny home or uh, you know a mobile home uh, a mobile water unit so this question actually assisted me to design my off the water grid trailer I in my third webinar complimentary webinar I actually give out my plans for it and in my course I've got more detailed plans um, how to build this trailer I haven't built one yet but I've got some good design drawings which incorporates the biochar filter the quick top that can open up and harvest uh, rain um, the grease trap for kitchen water the wetland that I spoke of for grey water so it's got different kinds of water coming in rain grey kitchen and I've even got a little composting toilet inside this trailer as well um, and basically it produces a different quality water goes out so you know from the kitchen water that water can go straight to a tree without bits and pieces of fats by a grease trap from a grey water the wetland can go to um, your veggies and then of course your rain water comes in through a biochar filter and then that's drinking with a pump high pressure anywhere you want how to safely treat water without smell or mosquitoes well the good news is that our wetland and which is not my wetland I mean, I'm inspired by the giants out there and this particular unit has actually been developed by Mike Reynolds from the Earthship Academy so the beauty about it is you've got gravel 40 centimeters and you've got about five centimeters of sand now the water level of treatment happens at the level of gravel so your outlet is where the gravel ends so which means that the water won't much go higher unless you're draining a bath it'll temporarily go higher and then it will settle in and it'll go through so the beauty about this is that the the, the smelly yucky water stuff that's being treated um, is all in the gravel then there is sand which acts as a filter and obviously then there is soil which acts as also another filter for smell and then the plants are planted in the gravel there is no water <laughs> there is no smell there is no water that you can see so then there is no mosquitoes end of story that's it how would the price be affected if the entire complex went down off the water grid well you know what it'll be awesome because you only need to build one or two larger wetlands which is much cheaper than building a wetland for every home uh, you can all convert an entire pool uh, to an eco pool as a as a community um, so you really need to look into more of a co-housing uh, unit because if you are in the city and you're not moving out so why, why don't you make your life in the city awesome so you and 10 friends could for example purchase an entire um, little townhouse complex for example with 10 homes or you know some just some ideas but anyway if the entire complex goes down the price is drastically re reduced per home because it's much easier to get one for example TLB that will dig out all the um, trenches for your wetlands than you know to have manual labor digging it for each home
so it's much more economical to go off the grid as a complex to make soil absorb our water our rain without it taking soil erosion away with it and you know so the ground can rejuvenate so earthworks 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 water flows downhill crosses the contour line at 90 degrees it's the law of nature so if you on that contour line build a berm like a speed bump hump and you take the soil upslope from and you make a little trench and then that soil goes into a hump just downslope so you've got a hump here all the water coming down is going to drop into the trench that's filled with logs and then it feeds into this swale and then you you make another one let's say three meters later so all the water from the rain is going to juice into the garden and then if you mulch it then the water is going to stay in your garden quite quite some time and it will reduce your irrigation I think 15 fold if you just do simple earthworks with mulch how to legalize any ecological wastewater system okay so here's a really simple trick that Mike Reynolds taught me um, from the Earthship Academy use a three-way valve so when the inspector comes so you've got a th you got your gray water coming in you've got a three-way valve uh, the one valve sends it to a wetland and then overflow goes to sewer and then should the wetland ever have a problem you basically turn the three-way valve this way and it diverts it to sewer so when the inspector comes in it's like oh but that's a normal system you just you know he sees it a normal system so sewer or sewer if there is a problem here so there's just a little detour of a wetland hmm, no problem so that's how they're getting the uh, gray water wetlands legalized in America, which is the strictest country for this kind of thing, that and England, I think. And uh, yeah, so that's a really awesome way. So check out a three-way valve system. Uh, so for those of you DIY handy, you'll know what I'm talking about. And you just divert the water. So you can, if you need to show the inspector. Here in Africa, I'm not showing anything to anybody. I, I'm cutting my pipes. I do what I want and really i do what i want and this is why it's been great to experiment for me here and russia as well very easy going on codes and regulations the country is so big they can't catch they're not going to go and look for so you know possibly choose countries that are more lenient for sustainability to thrive than to be locked up in somewhere where you can't go left or right but i know we'll close in our jobs and the story but that's not the story for now <laughs> so how to make these systems work in a cold climate so as i already given you the the how to we can uh, extend our wetland life so it doesn't freeze so so soon uh, with the foam um, obviously our water tanks will need to be um, covered in uh, in insulation so myself i'm in the process of moving to russia so these are the systems that will be developing um, in 2019 because i myself will be living on the land in a community so these freezing temperatures need to be dealt with in a way so my water or my pipes don't you know my pipes don't burst and my water carries on functioning so you have my guarantee my word that i will develop these systems for you next year in 2019 and you're going to have all that knowledge in the workshop in the course in our online training so you can utilize it but i'm going to obviously learn from the masters and um, install the systems in a way that can be conducive to freezing climate because it, uh, the place i'm going gets to minus 25 so we will be um, we will be developing this for cold climates um, but obviously you can speak to your local builders there is some like for example the pipes have to be dug in a meter deep below the frost line and uh, things like that so all of that I will be building from as early as spring this year this coming year so to all these systems and then obviously all this knowledge will be put into the training so all those all our students can benefit from it so if you've got any other questions on water gray water recycling uh, harvesting storage uh, rainwater filtration oh there's another cool question sorry I gotta answer this some folk were struggling with a lot of salt water 
Um, and uh, so let's talk about salt water. There's mangrove plants that love that salt. They suck salt up and they leave fresher water. So if you use mangrove type of plants, they can suck up the salt, uh, the salt salt uh, out of the water. And then of course you've got the highly iron rich um, soil, uh, water. And the trick for that is to take it through a pump, get a few plastic trays, um, with drill lots of holes and the water goes through and like, you know, and then it oxidizes. So, and then the oxidizing that falls down in the tank and then all the iron settles at the bottom. Again, once again, you take the water slightly higher and you send it to the next, for example, your biochar filter now doesn't have iron. It's not gonna clog it up. So I hope to see you on the inside of our training and if you've got any other questions, please scroll below and I'd love to help you however I can. Have an awesome day further.